Everyone good? <laughs> okay, so once we have done that, then we have time for question 10, uh, which is actually what I want to have a little bit of time to go over. Um, so that, so this is something that we haven't so far talked about in class, and um, your, so your exam two deals with the DC circuit. They are about at 40% of your exam two. And dealing with the DC circuit, so far, you have dealt, dealt with only really two circuit elements, batteries and resistors. And hopefully you are feeling a little bit familiar with the both of them, how batteries behave and how resistors behave. But one more circuit element that you can handle in part is capacitor. So, um, so I want you to have some sense of intuition for dealing with the capacitor in a simple sense, not in the full details, and in the simple sense of you know enough to answer part A here. So let me um, remind you of uh, remind you of how we deal with the capacitors. So with the capacitors, this is the one relationship to remember. I call the definition of capacitance. Definition of capacitance. It uh, well, capacitance C. It was uh, defined as amount of charge Q that you store per some voltage V that you apply. Does this look familiar? Yes. Yeah. And what I'll tell you is that when you are dealing with the capacitors, this is as important as Ohm's law was when you are dealing with the registers. This is really the thing that tells you how capacitors behave in circuit. So, um, so let's look at this circuit. It says, uh, I want to save time involved in drawing circuits. So let me draw it this way. So, um, so it talks about, um, so I want you guys to just visualize this circuit. Imagine you have a circuit built to it. Um, so I guess the easier way to visualize it might be, first imagine a circuit made up with the batteries and two registers, are they in series or parallel? I imagine the, uh, the switch is closed. Are they series, uh, registers in series or registers in parallel? Registers in series, right? So this is a, if you didn't have, you know, if you didn't have the capacitor, then it's a circuit that you know how to deal with. So the question I want you to be able to answer is, all right, now let's imagine that we are adding this capacitor. How should we handle this capacitor? And um, here's one thing, one complication that this will introduce. This capacitor will make the circuit uh, time dependent. So the effect that this capacitor has on the rest of the circuit will be a function of time. And that's something that I don't expect you to deal with on exam two. That'll be for your exams probably three and maybe the final exam. Or final exam and maybe exam three. So, so but what I want to, I think what I have, what I think we have enough time to get at in the three minutes or so that we have is to look at how the time dependence of capacitor works out so that you can look at it, you can answer this really for two very specific times. One is, um, one that I want you to be able to answer is how does the circle look at time equals zero? as in the moment you close the switch, how does the circuit look? Right? And I want you to be able to, what, what do you think the other moment in time is? Well, not, not when, so let's say we close the switch at time equals zero, and we're just gonna leave it there. So I say, okay, I'm interested in how the circuit looks the moment you close it, and there's one other moment in time that I think you have enough to uh, reason through. Yeah, infinity, after a very long time. So in other words, so the other picture that I think you can work out is the circuit that, well, as time goes to infinity. You know, the opposite of zero is infinity. <laughs> so, 
So I think we have two or minute, two minutes or so, and I think that's actually enough to work this out. So uh, since uh, the capacitor is time dependent, we have to specify some initial conditions, how it actually looks like at time equals zero. And this won't be arbitrary. This will be based on uh, your physical intuition. As a, you know, this is a capacitor. You've seen the capacitor, right? The moment, so this is connected to this circuit, and initially the switch was open, and at time, it, look, imagine the capacitor just before we close the circuit. How much charge do you think is on the capacitor? Zero, right? If it had any charge on it, yeah, yeah. So the natural state that you can imagine the capacitor to be at is, so before closing circuit, before closing, the charge on the capacitor was zero. That's a very natural assumption to make. And sometimes problem will, will tell you that directly. So this is what I want you to read through. Let's say at time equals zero, I closed my circuit. How much charge do you think should be on this capacitor now? The fraction of a second after I close the switch. Still zero. Because you know, whatever amount of charge on it, it can change at some rate. And the rate of change of the charge will be the current. So, so this is where you can actually write this down. If you have some, uh, if you are given some amount of current flowing through the capacitor, you can definitely say that is equal to the rate of change of the charge accumulating on the capacitor. Now, in most circumstances, this current is going to be, uh, it's not going to be infinity. It's going to be some finite number, which means for some finite amount of time, your, or if it, this dt is equal to zero, then your dq will be zero. So that's where I'm trying to explain the intuition that Kevin was saying, that the moment you after close the switch, the moment after closing at t, uh, or moment after closing, you would say that amount of charge at t equals zero is still zero. That in the you know, infinitesimal time before closing the, not closing the switch and closing it, this one changes suddenly. Yeah? So let me ask you this question. Uh, what do you think is the voltage difference between one end of this register and the other end. So th this is how I want you to think through this circuit. So I want to know, figure out the voltage difference from this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit. What else uh, is related, directly related to this voltage difference? Uh, I don't want to quite, because I really have no way of finding this directly. I want to go get to something else that I can actually find out in a single step. So there's something else that's equal to the voltage difference from one end of the register to the other end. Some other voltage in this circuit that's equal to that. The voltage after resistor? Yeah, yeah, so once again, that's what I'm trying to get at. I want you to. No, it, the voltage here is not going to be the same as better because there's this register here. If there's current flowing, the voltage will change. Yeah, voltage of the capacitor. That's the thing that's connected in parallel to the register. Remember, definition of a parallel means that they have the same voltages as they do here. So voltage difference across the capacitor, what is it? No, 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 we just talked about it. Well, okay, uh, we didn't just talk about it. Um, so if you want to know the voltage of the capacitor, the very first thing you go through is the definition of capacitance. That's why I'm telling you now that this is as important in dealing with the capacitor as red Ohm's law is in dealing with the register. So whenever you want voltage difference across a register and you have the current, you would go through Ohm's law. So here, we know something about the charge on the capacitor. So when, now when I'm asking the voltage change across capacitor, I go to the capa definition of capacitance. So we know Q is equal to zero. What does that tell us about V? Also zero, yeah. So this gives you a direct relationship between amount of charge 
and the voltage difference across it. Um, all right, I guess I underestimated how much time this would take. Um, um, well, I'll, I'll just give you one more statement um, so that I can at least wrap up what we started uh, without having really time to give you intuitive feel for it. So circuit at time equals zero, let me just wrap this up. We said circuit at time equals zero, this Q at time equals zero being zero, this means that voltage difference across the capacitor is equal to zero. Yeah? And for the circuit at some infinite time, um, so this I'll just have to tell you what it is without ex really explaining why. Um, at this point, uh, what we can see about is the current through the capacitor, this should be equal to zero. And that really follows from this relationship here. Um, because you know, at some infinite time, we are assuming that the charge probably won't be changing anymore. So um, at the moment, well, current will be zero because charge is not changing anymore. And um, you can simplify circuit with the help of these two rules. With the help of these two rules, you can simplify circuits dealing with the capacitor either by replacing capacitor with a thin piece of wire, meaning you know, zero voltage change, or by replacing the capacitor with an open circuit, meaning zero current flowing. And which one you use depends on the circumstance. There are some homework questions where you would practice it. Um, but so you know, your homework, it's not homework, your, um, your exam does include the capacitor, as in we do, did talk about definition of capacitance two weeks ago. Um, and you know, dealing with the circuits that have capacitor on it, if it comes up, it'll be a small portion of your exam. But it's something that you are expected to be able to handle because all this is, is application of something that you already know. It's not something new that I'm springing on you two days before the exam. <laughs>